Good morning and welcome to another fantastic worship service with Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. I am so excited about what God is gonna do. This is Communion Sunday. This is the day when we celebrate the death and the remembrance of God's suffering for us. And we are so excited to do this even virtually together. If this is your first time watching, please let us know. Text us at 313131. You can text new guest. We would love to reach out to you. If this is your church home, welcome home. We are excited about worship today. Let's continue now with our praise team. worship experience. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Kingdom Fellowship. Say, I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When storms are raging, He's my shelter.
freedom. The atmosphere changes when I shout Jesus. We're so blessed to have the anointed White family leading us in worship each and every Sunday. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited about the rest of, the rest of our worship experience. I'm Minister Brian here from the ministerial staff here at Kingdom Fellowship and Me Church. Why don't we go to our Lord in prayer as we continue in worship? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed, every spirit is praying. Lord God, we thank you uh, for this day. We love you today, Father. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that you touched us today with your precious hand of mercy, Lord God, that you breathed into us uh, the precious breath of life, Lord, and given, given us another, another opportunity to come here and to seek your face, Lord God. We want to exalt you on today, Lord God. We want to glorify you on today because you are worthy, Father, and worthy of our praise. And, and even though there's a, a great deal of turmoil going on in the land, Lord God, even though there's strife and, and trial going on in the land, we're grateful uh, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so as it is on this Sunday, Lord God, that we come here to our worship experience, we want you to know that we are grateful, Father, for your keeping of us, Lord God. We're grateful for your power. We're grateful for your provision in your presence, Lord God. And we ask right now and in the name of Jesus that you would do something special on today. I'm praying, Lord God, for my brother. I'm praying for my sister on today that come to this uh, worship experience looking for you in a mighty, in a new, in a, uh, in a miraculous way, Lord God. And we thank you for what you're going to do in advance of the provision. Lord, we ask that you would uh, pour into our senior pastor on today as he prepares to bring us the word, Lord God. We're thankful for your word on today. We ask for a special anointing, Lord God, that you would touch him because there can be no proclamation without your inspiration, Lord. We thank you for his leadership, Lord God. We thank you for his guidance, Father, and we are uh, looking forward in anticipation for what you're going to do through the man of God on today, Lord God. We uh, bless your name in advance, Lord God. We ask that you would do these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we'll be ever so careful to give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise, and all God's people said amen. Amen and praise God. We're so excited for all of you to join us today, but we're especially excited for our uh, new and returning guests. We're so excited uh, that we've created a song just for you. It's Gather, Grow, Give, and Go. Amen. Yeah. 
Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. We are kingdom fellowship. We're kingdom focused. Brothers and sisters, we are excited to be in the month of September. I just want to say up front uh, a big happy birthday to all persons who have birthdays in the month of September. And if you all were married according to the standard found in Genesis 2, and this is your anniversary month, we pray God's blessing upon you and your family and pray that God might continue to strengthen the covenant and continue to strengthen the ties that bind for all the days of your life. This is an exciting, exciting, you might be able to tell, but this is an exciting season for our church family. September is God's doing some new things. In fact, God laid on my heart to preach and to teach throughout the month unleashed. And so I just want to encourage you to tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and make sure that you share it on social media so that others might be impacted by this word about how God has freed us and allowed us to live an unleashed life. Y'all, it's been a long time coming, but a change is coming. I want you to know that on September 12th, we'll be having our groundbreaking for our new worship facility our new base of operations uh, there in Calverton, Maryland. I can hardly wait. I'm I'm on tiptoe anticipation for just being able to celebrate what God and the people of God, you, have been able to do together. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're not able to do it like we normally would. And so uh, we have a tent there, but we've had to do uh, some amazing things. I want to thank the entire staff who's been working assiduously to make sure that everything is going to be in order and safe. And uh, we've received all of our permissions from the county and we're following every guideline. We've already maxed out on those who can attend. It was a limited attendance. And so both our special guests, as well as our volunteers, as well as our membership has already filled up uh, the limited seating that was available for that Saturday. But guess what? We're going to have it all available for you online. So please make sure that you tune in. This is a historic moment. This is a God moment. And I want to make sure that you are a part of it on that September 12th at 10 a.m. And then, of course, on that Sunday, we're going to keep the tent up on the property and we're going to have outside worship as well. My father, the Reverend Dr. William D. Watley is going to be our guest preacher and we're certainly excited. I'm going to have my my spiritual father in ministry, Reverend Dr. Lee P. Washington preaching the groundbreaking and then my birth father and uh, my other spiritual father, Reverend Dr. William Watley is going to be preaching that Sunday. He'll be preaching at 8 and at 1030 a.m. We're going to stream those services live. We put out the invitation to the congregation and y'all know y'all sold that thing out within a matter of hours and so even though, again, 
again, we can't get any more people in physically under the tent. You can still be a part of this experience uh, by worshiping with us virtually. And I really encourage you to invite you to be a part of it. There's going to be some special guests and special things, some surprises we have in store, and you don't want to miss it. I'm excited about this season and the kingdom of God. In fact, God's doing all kinds of things in our ministry. And one of the things I'm excited to formally announce for those of you who saw my remarks at the March in Washington, you already know that we're birthing a separate nonprofit entitled the Black Idea Coalition. IDEA stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Action. With all that's been happening throughout the summer in our fight for freedom, one of the areas that we recognize we've got to get fully free is economically. That at the end of the day, black businesses, those who are struggling uh, to pursue their career goals and objectives, uh, those communities that need greater investment, we've got to be able to put ourselves in position to, to work with companies and with corporations and with the government to bring these changes to pass. And the Black Idea Coalition is about that work. We've got some wonderful partners. Several of our members are helping to lead and we have some wonderful institutions that already have signed up. We're going to have our kickoff summit on September uh, the 23rd at 1 p.m. I want to encourage you to make sure that you're registered. You can go to the to theblackidea.com and register. Please share that with others. Follow us on social media. This is the beginning of the movement that I know is going to impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of millions, and I want you to be a part of it on the ground floor. We have speakers from all over the nation, uh, leaders of corporations and organizations are going to be a part of it. It's going to be an amazing conversation, and I believe that there are others that can contribute to this work, so please reach out to us at theblackidea.com. It's a separate nonprofit, but I'm glad and I'm proud that our church has had the vision to be a part of it its foundation. I'm asking for your prayers uh, for Brother Darwin Johnson. Brother Darwin uh, Johnson is a part of our Stevens ministry, and our Stevens ministry is the ministry that reaches out to those who have lost loved ones. Well, uh, the death angel has now invaded his ranks. He's lost his mother. She's made her transition. And the same way that Brother Darwin has been there for us, now it's our time and our turn to be there for him. So please, would you be in prayer for the Johnson family and let's surround him and show him the love and support that he's been able to show to others. In fact, let's just pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the Johnson family and ask your special grace to be upon them, as well as others whose names that we don't know to call at this time, but also have experienced loss. We pray, God, that you might stand in the gap and that you might gird them up, that you might grant them supernatural strength to make it through these days and to celebrate the life of their loved one. We ask as a congregation that you might help us to be a comfort to them, particularly during this season and time. We give you glory that to be absent in the body is to be present in the Lord. And so we celebrate what you have done and calling another saint home. In Jesus' name, amen. We're so excited about our new CDC, the Kingdom Community Development Corporation. We're excited about the work that's going on there. Reverend Kendra Smith is leading an effort uh, to be a blessing, not just to our congregation, but to this community. And I'm excited to announce that we're now a hub for Montgomery County, which means we're gonna be providing additional service beyond the feeding work that we've already been doing. And you're gonna hear about that more in just a couple weeks. Well, brothers and sisters, it's time to receive our tithe and offering for today. I'm I'm so grateful to God for your faithfulness to the kingdom of God and to your church home because of your faithfulness, because of God's faithfulness towards you and your faithfulness and paying your tithes and sowing your offering. You are putting us in position to do all the work of ministry that God has called us to do, including our new facility. I want to thank God again for all those that are contributing to our Kingdom Builders campaign. And certainly as we anticipate groundbreaking, we're believing for a swell in giving so that we can move forward in all that God has for us. I just want to invite you now, if you are new to the tithing ministry, if you're one of our new tithers, we just want to thank God for you and want to encourage you to reach out. There's a number that you can text because we want to send you some special information. Our tithers are the foundation of all that happens in terms of our stewardship here at Kingdom Fellowship. And I want you to know that your giving is making a vital difference in the work that's being done here. Listen, whatever you're giving, especially if you're giving to your kingdom, to our kingdom care ministry, especially for those who are not members, we want to thank you. It's impacting the lives of people and in making a difference. It's allowing them to have food on the table. And we want to thank God for your generosity. In fact, I just want to pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and praise because you recognize every good and perfect gift comes from you. Because you've blessed us, we are now excited about blessing you, blessing your house, blessing your church, and blessing your work. So God, I pray 
that you'll bless both gift and giver in Jesus name. Amen. The electronic means of giving, they are on your screen. And so we encourage you to take advantage of them and give as God has blessed you. It's a wonderful day for worship. I'm all dressed up. It's first Sunday. I need you to get your communion elements ready because when we come back, we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper. Come on, y'all. Let's have church. Groundbreaking for Kingdom Fellowship's new base of operations for local, national, and global ministry is coming up on Saturday, September 12th at our new Calverton property, which will serve as the new home for Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. And on Sunday, September 13th, we'll have a special corporate worship opportunity. All of these events will be strictly governed by CDC and Maryland state guidelines regarding COVID-19 safety measures for gathering. And it's because of your prayers, your giving, and the fact that you continue to speak well of this historic God-sized project. Please continue to remain kingdom-focused. Despite growing interest in diversity and inclusion, African Americans are still underrepresented. Systemic racism remains a barrier to the upward mobility of black professionals. Our fight for justice cannot merely focus on the legal system. It must deal with the economic system that it protects. Now is the time for change. Introducing the Black Idea Coalition. We are dedicated to helping companies achieve black inclusion, diversity, and equity in action. Marches and movements only have meaning when they lead to structural change in the economic system. Join us on September 23rd for the Black Idea Summit. Register now at theblackidea.com. Let's create an equitable future for the black community. Our time is now. Follow the money. My name is Matthew Wadley, and I endorse this message. Registration for Financial Peace University is open now. These virtual classes will help you to get a better grip on your financial future, get out of debt, and begin to develop the personal and family wealth that God has designed for you to have. We started off in credit card debt with no savings. In addition, we were newly married and were not on one accord around our finances. We have been blessed during a time of lack. Registration is $50 for members of Kingdom Fellowship AME Church and $89 for non-members. Registration is available online at kingdom.global slash financial peace. Virtual classes are held Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Financial Peace University and Kingdom Fellowship, changing the lives of believers through financial freedom. Life groups this spring was the best decision that I made for 2020. I was looking for somewhere that I could socially interact with my brothers and sisters of Kingdom, being that I'm new. I loved it. I loved the people that I met through there, and I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet these people if it wasn't for life groups. I had my fellow brothers and sisters who were in the group with me cheering me on. Being a member of the Stepping in Faith Walking Life Group has meant accountability and growth. Our Christian relationships have gently urged us to stay motivated, to follow God's word, to stay in God's word as we take care of ourselves, our families, as well as the members of our life group. The Kingdom Cares Fall Food Program begins on Saturday, September 19th in Montgomery and Prince George's counties. Volunteers are needed with particular emphasis on bilingual volunteers who are proficient in Spanish and or French. We'll have apartment curbside distributions, which are great opportunities for our college students. Our Kingdom Cares Pantry takes place on weekdays, in the evenings, and on Saturdays, where volunteers are needed to help pack, stock, and assist with mobile delivery. Get more details online at kingdom.global slash kingdom cares or email us at go at kingdom.global. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it's told thy In the arms of faith and be close.
closer drawn to thee lord draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me Blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Come on, sing that favorite verse. Consecrate me. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. And let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thy. So draw me nearer, dearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, yeah, nearer, blessed Lord, to the precious bleeding side. Amen. The prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy to give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. As it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that as precious death until us coming again, hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant thee be receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same day that he was betrayed took bread. When given thanks, he broke it and gave it to him, saying, Take ye, for this is my body, broken for you and for many. Do this as often as ye shall, in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to him, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many. Do this as often as ye shall, in remembrance of me. Let the church say, Amen. And now we take together the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we feast on it with faith and things that give in our hearts that may renew our souls and bodies unto everlasting life. Take and eat. Draw me near, near and we're grateful. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now we take the cup. The precious blood of Jesus, more precious than silver and gold, more precious than the blood of bulls upon altars slain. We drink it with faith, thanksgiving in our hearts. They renew our souls and bodies unto everlasting life. Take and drink. To the precious And we're grateful. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, we now renewed our covenant with God. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The prayer of thanksgiving. O Lord, our heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your son jesus christ and through faith in his blood we and your whole church may obtain a remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion and here we offer and present unto you O lord ourselves our souls and bodies to be a reasonable holy and living sacrifice unto you humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service 
not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The Gloria in Excelsis. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards people. We praise you. We bless you. We worship you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You who takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord. You alone, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our Most High, and the glory of God the Father, let the church say amen. Brothers and sisters, we are glad to have renewed our covenant with Almighty God. We're going to ask now that you might prepare your hearts and minds for the Samana selection, after which we shall see what word there is from the Lord. Come on, clap your hands. Listen, the Lord can and will deliver every obstacle in your way. We serve a God that destroys every obstacle. Hallelujah. Giants do die. Yeah. Come on, sing it. Zion. Zion. Do die. Do die. The bigger, the bigger they are. The harder they fall. The harder they try.
but you've already won. You feel the freedom, wave those hands and just say, they gotta come. visitation of your spirit and the declaration of your word that you might set us on a street called straight and that you might move us to the place that you desire us to be have your way right now save the sinner that's near as hell reclaim the backslider mend a marriage god do a new thing in an old place be glorified we pray it's in jesus name we want to say thank you and all god's children said amen well, let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. I'm excited because this is the month of September and we have already embarked on a new series through our Bible studies and uh, on Sunday called Unleash. And I just want to go ahead and delve right now into the Word of God. Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning reading at the first verse. And there these words are recorded. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Unleashed unleash. Well, just a week ago, I thought I was being smart. I decided to stay in downtown D.C. in preparation for being one of the speakers of the 57th anniversary of the March on Washington. And that morning, I rose and put on my uh, responsible black preacher blue suit and uh, put on my shirt and tie as I was commanded to by my wife, despite the humidity and forecast of the heat for that day. I found myself going downstairs in the lobby and getting ready to catch the Uber over to where the speakers were to assemble. However, after hailing the Uber on my app, I was discovered. I was surprised and concerned to discover that after several minutes, rather than the time elapsing to its arrival going down, it actually started increasing. 
And so after a few minutes, I decided to cancel the Uber. I tried another one. That didn't work. I spoke uh, to the person at the front desk, and, and, and she helped me to call a lift. And the same thing happened. Now I'm really getting concerned because time is ticking. I don't want to miss the time that's been assigned to me to speak. So I went out to the corner of the hotel and tried to hail several cabs. All of them had persons in them. And so now I'm really stuck like Chuck. And so I went back and, and got in my car. And, and even though the person who was at the hotel told me, listen, don't don't try to uh, drive because there's going to be no parking. The police have shut down all of downtown. That's why the Ubers couldn't get to you. And, and so you'd be better to walk right here. I'm thinking to myself, I'm not trying to walk 20 blocks uh, in D.C. humidity trying to get to this speech. And so I got in the car and made my way around the circumference of where uh, the police had locked down and found myself about eight to ten blocks away uh, from the speaker's tent uh, where I realized that this would be as far as I could go and I should take the street parking that was available. But now I still got eight to ten blocks and I'm trying to tell y'all walking in this blue suit is not a good idea. And so I decided to to step outside of the box. I looked at the corner and saw some birds there. The bird, the bird is one of those uh, electronic uh, motorized scooters that you see folks riding around on. And, and after checking to see if anybody knew who I was, I, I took my mini iPad and put it in the small of my back underneath my jacket and opened up the app on my phone and unlocked the, the bird. And yes, your pastor was rolling down the streets of Washington, D.C. on the way to the March on Washington on a bird, trying to do whatever I could to get to where I needed to be. All of that anxiety and stress, all of that concern and worry that I was feeling while I was waiting for the Ubers and Lyfts and trying to take taxis and find parking, I felt all of that melting away as I realized that I was going to make my assignment and get to where I needed to be. In a word, brothers and sisters, I felt unleashed. And can I suggest to you that if there's anything that ought to typify what it means to be a believer, what it means to be saved, it ought to be that sense of feeling unleashed. Being a Christian means that you ought to feel like you're riding a bird in the middle of an unoccupied street on a sunny day on the way to fulfill your assignment. Being a Christian ought to mean to you that you know that you have been released from sin and from all that it would bring in your life. Being a Christian at the end of the day means that you and and I are not under any condemnation because we are now in Christ Jesus. And, and brothers and sisters, I want you to see that at the end of the day, if you don't value your freedom, you, the adversary will take it from you or will take its joy from you. I, I want you to see this because what I've come to realize is that when Jesus suffered and died on Calvary's cross, when he sacrificed himself and gave his life as a ransom to rescue us, he saved us from the sting of sin. He saved us from the stain of sin and he saved us from the strain of sin. And brothers and sisters, I need you to realize that because for freedom, Christ has set us free, we ought to make up our minds right now that we will never again submit ourselves to the yoke of bondage. Let me see if I can break that thing down like a fraction because I want you to live from this moment forward an unleashed life. First of all, I think I just told you that when Christ died on the cross and was raised on that third day, he saved us from the sting of sin. Listen, whenever we fall short of the glory of God, whenever we sin by thought, by word and by deed, we ought to have a sense of pricking of our conscience. We ought not be able to just do anything, say anything, think anything and not feel something about it. But, but it ought to weigh on our minds, our hearts and our spirits. This, this is how the sting of sin works. And this is how David described that sting in Psalm 51 and three. He said, when, uh, for I know 
my transgressions and my sin is always before me. In other words, when I sin, when I fall short of the glory of God, when I know right and still do wrong, it sticks with me. When I choose lust rather than life, when I act dishonorably towards others or even towards my God, when I allow the spirit of jealousy to flood my heart, I, 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 I have the sting of sin on the inside of me. And, and listen, whenever you are stung, you got to have a, a way of dealing with it. And when you are stung by sin, you got to treat it, watch this, with confession and repentance. That This is what David did just in the next verse. He said, against you and you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. In other words, David did not seek to justify his sin or rationalize his sin or compare his sin to somebody else's, but rather he acknowledged and admitted the stinger that was still in him. And can I just testify, because I think I shared a few years ago how as a child, uh, we were over at my godmother's house playing in the backyard, and and somehow a, a, a had stung me in the back of the neck. I came crying to my godmother who did not seem concerned at all because she had seen this circumstance before and knew how to address it. She get, said, go get my tweezers. And, and she took the tweezers and took the stinger out of my neck. But even though the stinger was out of my neck, the sting was still there. It was still hurting and it was still painful. And then she said, go on and get one of my cigarettes. I ain't going to call a name, but I went and got a cigarette and, 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 and she took it and she split it open and she made some spit and put it on the tobacco and then put it on the back of my neck. Now y'all can only imagine. And now I have a true sense of how that blind man that Jesus took the spit and made mud and put it on his eyes felt. She, she took that tobacco and put it on the back of my neck. I'm upset. I'm concerned, but I refuse to move it because I'm scared of what she might do next if I take the tobacco off. And yet, within a matter of minutes, something unexpected happened. The sting that was paining me and hurting me all of a sudden seemed to be drawn out. What's your point, preacher? My point simply is this, that when Christ died on Calvary's cross, he recognized that we would continue to struggle with sin all the days of our lives. And so he created a, 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 a salve. He created a bomb. He created a capacity to remove the sting of sin from our lives uh, with his own blood. Now, listen, what he paid for his treatment was more than the cost of a cigarette because he paid with his whole life. And I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why Jesus cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life, but oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad he did. Listen, when Jesus died on the cross, we were freed from condemnation because he freed us. Watch this, not just from the sting of sin, but then secondarily, he say he freed us from the stain of sin. See, the truth is, even after the stinger was removed, uh, uh, there still was a mark from what had happened to me. And can I tell you that one of the reasons the devil is so dastardly is because the Bible says he is a liar and the father of lies. And one of the major areas the devil lies to us about is about our future. Consider, if you would, how Satan came in the form of the snake right there in the garden in Genesis and lied to Adam and Eve and said to them, listen, if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will be equal and just just like God. It was a lie and it was a lie about their future. But can I share this with you? One of the most difficult things the devil can do is to not lie about your future but to tell the truth about your past. That, that when you and I have fallen short of the glory of God, that the devil, as the accuser of the brethren, likes to bring that stain of sin back up in front of us uh, to make us feel unworthy of relationship with God and, and ruin spiritually to, to live a full and a free life. But the good news of the glorious gospel is that when Jesus died on the cross, there was now 
no longer any condemnation for those who are in him because his cleansing was free, it was full, and it was final. Somebody ought to be shouting right there that when Christ died, it did not give us an installment plan of deliverance, but it was a free, full, and final act of redemption for all those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen, brothers and sisters, the stain of sin need no longer define you. Don't allow the adversary to make you feel disqualified from living your best spiritual life just because of your past and the mistakes that you've made. Because you got to recognize that one of the joys of knowing Jesus is that Jesus recycles. I'm, I'm driving down the country road not long ago and I see a crowd over in a field. I'm trying to figure out what's going on because from the road all I can see is a half torn down barn there and I'm figuring it's some kind of auction. But as I get closer since we're in the country, I'm looking for some animals, but there's no horses or cows there. I get a little closer and I don't see any produce being sold. And so I finally spoke to somebody in the crowd and I said, listen, well, what's all this about? What's going on? Well, what are they selling up in here? Are, are they selling animals? Are they selling produce? Uh, the man said, no, they selling the barn. I, I said, I'm sorry. I thought you said they're selling the barn. All I see is a broken down old beat up barn. He said, yeah, that's exactly what I said, because they're selling the reclaimed wood that 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 what used to be considered as trash and junk and without value now it's more valuable today than it was the day that barn was built can I tell you the joy of knowing Jesus is no matter what I've done how many times I've done it how recently I've done it Jesus is able to reclaim me and restore me and give me a greater value than I had when I was on my own here it is I, I try to tell you that that Jesus's salvation frees you from the sting of sin it, it frees you from the stain of sin. But then thirdly, watch this. It frees you from the strain of sin. What I've discovered is that sometimes even when I get past the pain of what the devil's done and I forgive myself, sometimes I got to deal with folks who refuse to forgive me and release me from my past and from my mistakes. And it's a strain. It's stressful when people continue to hold over your head things that you've done wrong. I mean, it's one thing to suffer from spiritual condemnation, but it's another thing to deal with social condemnation. And right now, don't you know that there are some people uh, who have yet to forgive you or to forget uh, what you've done wrong in your life? They're trying to keep fresh your mistakes right now. And as soon as you try to move forward, as soon as you try to grow up in God, as soon as you try to develop as a disciple, they're real quick to hit the rewind button and remind you of your past. Can I testify? Uh, I shared with you before, I, I was not uh, the best student in high school. In fact, I graduated in the top of the second half of my class. I was not popular in high school. I was kind of off on my own, which is why you might understand why when it came time for my 10th reunion, uh, I was looking forward to seeing my old classmates because uh, in that decade that had passed, uh, the Lord had been good to me and had changed my fortunes. I, I was excited to put on my suit and, and drive up to the place where the reunion was in my candy apple convertible bins just to let somebody know, yeah, I've got a past. Yeah, I made some mistakes. Yeah, I got off to a small start. But I thank God that he gave me he gave me double for my trouble and the glory of the latter house is greater than the glory of the former. What's your point? My point is this, that when people try to bring up your past, your, your strategy should not be to deny your past, but it should be to distinguish your past. In other words, uh, that was me then, but look at what God has done now. You ought to go ahead, get in the mirror, and take a spiritual picture of your before so you can start working on your after shot and start showing folks what God can do whenever you allow him to have reign and rule in your life. The Bible says uh, that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Here it is. Is. And because people have a habit of trying to lock you down and keep you in your place, you need to keep recalling and reminding yourself that for freedom, Christ has set you free and you've been a 
down least once and for all. Don't you allow people to put you down, hold you down. Don't allow anyone to seek to undo the finished work of freedom and forgiveness that Jesus has given to you. Don't allow cancel culture to cancel your future and your present. It's, it's an interesting concept. It's the only area of agreement that I can find between both Donald Trump and Barack Obama. Each of them has spoken publicly about the danger of cancel culture. In fact, uh, uh, there was a, a letter, an open letter that was signed by more than 100 influential people, including Salman Rushdie, J.K. Rowling, Winston, Winton Mar Marcellus and Cornell West. Uh, the point of the letter was to caution the toxic culture uh, of canceling people because they've made mistakes or they've said something that you don't disagree with. It's a terrible time in which we live in which one tweet one text, one bad judgment, one moment of bad judgment can ruin some career and change somebody's life. I'm not suggesting that people should not be held accountable. I'm not suggesting that when people act terribly that they should not be held responsible. But what I am suggesting is that if we're asked, expecting people to be perfect, then we should not expect people to be, serve as leaders because nobody can stand under the scrutiny of perfection. You're not hearing what I'm saying. We're living in a graceless time where it seems as if everyone's just waiting to jump on the next person to make a mistake. But the problem is it's a good idea until you're the one who's messed up. I'm so glad to know that before Donald Trump and Barack Obama and the authors got together to sign their letter, Jesus already made a decision to cancel the cancel culture once and for all. Right there in Romans the eighth chapter, he declared who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies who then can condemn. No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. In other words, brothers and sisters, Jesus is our justifier. By his blood, we are justified. And once I'm justified with him, once I have been cleansed by his blood, once I have been freed by his sacrifice, I am unleashed once and for all, and I refuse to allow you or anybody else to cancel that which God has called blessed or what God has declared to be good and perfect. Here it is. The Bible says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, rather than allowing Jesus's commutation to take away our condemnation, too many of us are attempting jailbreak on our own. The, the verse says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Too many people are trying to take away their own condemnation, but they're trying to legitimate the illegitimate, that they're trying to justify choices and thoughts and lifestyles and habits and activities which are outside of the word, the will, and the way of the kingdom of God. You got to be careful about how you start trying to justify what you want to do because as soon as you do that, you become your own God. You got to be careful about how you start trying to talk about you're living your own truth because what that really means is that you're living under a sense of moral relativism where right is whatever you say it is. I mean, I'm confused about the time in which we live because I saw on social media some of the same folks coming for Kamala Harris that were also seeking to justify the video by Cardi B and her colleagues and their vile song. What's your point? My point simply is this. You got to know the difference between John Newton's amazing grace and Dietrich Bonhoeffer's cheap grace. You got to recognize that there's division in our land right now because people are seeking to justify their truth rather than living the truth of almighty God. I mean, think about it. We live under this notion that you can live your own truth as long as you're not hurting anybody. But what if your truth is racism? What if your truth is sexism or classism? 
The truth of the matter is you can't live in isolation. Sooner or later, it's going to impact and affect somebody else. Maybe that's why Dr. Martin Luther King said all this is simply to say that all life is interrelated. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. As long as there is poverty in this world, no man can be totally rich even if he has a billion dollars. As long as diseases are rampant and millions of people cannot expect to live more than 20 or 30 years, no man can be totally healthy even if he just got a clean bill of health from the finest clinic in America. Strangely enough, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. You can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. In other words, I got to recognize that we're in this thing together. That it's not about me doing my thing, but there is a higher standard. There is a moral truth. There is an objective level that God is calling all of us to live to. And whenever I live in filth, whenever I live in hatred, whenever I live in enmity toward God or enmity towards man, I have allowed the virus to affect my spirit and sooner or later it's going to infect somebody else. I, I got to get out of here. But but the Bible says that Jesus, that Paul declares in Romans 8, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Christ Jesus. That, that text begins with the word therefore. And you know that therefore it is a conjunction. It connects something that happened before with something that's about to happen. And because therefore starts off chapter number eight, uh, you really got to go backwards and look at what happens in chapter number seven. And the whole issue in chapter number seven is to prove to us once and for all that we cannot deliver ourselves. We cannot unleash ourselves. Here's how Paul puts it uh, in chapter number seven. When I would would do good. Evil is always present and the good that I would do is not that which I do and the evil that I don't want to do is the very thing that I do. Oh wretched man that I am who can deliver me from this mortal death but I thank God he doesn't pen, put his pen down there but he answers his own question and says thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. It is only in Christ that I truly can be unleashed. It matters not how much money I make. It matters not to where my address is. It matters not how senior I am in the company. It is only through the freedom of relationship with Christ that allows me to truly be delivered from the sting, the stain, and the strain of sin. I'm out of here. But I want you to understand it is only when you get in Christ and when you allow Christ to get in you that you will truly be unleashed. That's why Jesus said in John the 15th chapter and the 5th verse, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit and apart from me, you can do nothing. He says, if you're in me, that, that's a statement of intimacy. He's not talking about God adjacent. He's talking about being God intimate. He's talking about closeness with God, nearness with God. He's talking about allowing God to be fully formed in you, which requires some intentionality. God doesn't just show up in your life, but you've got to open up your heart and let him be in as your Lord and Savior. You've got to seek him in prayer and seek God in praise and seek God in his word and seek God in fasting and seek God in worship and seek God in meditation. You've got to seek God with all of your heart and your mind and your soul and your strength and God will allow you to bear fruit. He'll allow you to initiate new things in your life. Listen, Jesus didn't just set us free from sin but he set us free for himself and for his kingdom and for his church and for his purpose. Can I ask you, what are you using your freedom for? What are you using your new life for? What are you using your abundant life for? I need to know today, is God using the gifts and the graces that he's put on the inside of you? Are you allowing him to cultivate the fruit of your spirit so that you might be a blessing to his kingdom and to his church? I need you to understand.
understand that it's only in Christ that you can truly find freedom. I need you to know that Jesus came that you might be unleashed to live and to love and to laugh. He came that you might be unleashed to walk in power and purpose and with passion. He came that you might be unleashed so that you can serve and sow and sacrifice. You can pray and praise and preach. He came that you might be unleashed so that you might conquer cancer and COVID, that you might defeat poverty and victory, that you might be able to intercede for others and build his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Shackled by a heavy burden beneath a load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Brothers and sisters, I need you to know that Jesus has touched you with his finger of love. He's allowed his blood to cover your sin and to cancel your debt. He's given you new, eternal and abundant life, which means you are unleashed to live the life that God has called you to live. I invite you now to live your best life, which is in Christ. Brothers and sisters, let me just pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you and we praise you that you have given us a one-way ticket out of condemnation. And I pray even now for that brother, that sister who still feels unworthy. God, allow them to be released from their feeling to the place of faith where they know that you receive them, you affirm them, you welcome them, you embrace them with your unquenchable love. Now for the one that doesn't know your love, allow them to accept you in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. If I just prayed for you because you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, don't waste this moment. But know that this is a divine time for you to be saved, for you to be delivered, for condemnation to be canceled off of your life. All you need to do is reach out to the number that's on the screen. Text that number. One of our leaders is waiting to pray for you personally within a matter of minutes. They're not going to get to you next week or next or tomorrow. Right now, they're going to pray to you the prayer of salvation, show you the word of God, what it means to be saved, and you will be released and relieved from the shackle of sin and stain and sting and strain of sin. Come right now and be saved. And if you don't have a church home where you're under pastoral leadership and a place where you're working out your soul's salvation and using your gifts to build up the body of Christ, I don't care where you are in the country or around the world. We can't meet physically, but we're connected and we're still the church right now. But you need to make a formal commitment to be a part of this body of believers called Kingdom Fellowship. I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your church. Come on, reach out to that number as well. We'd be happy to welcome you on in. Finally, if you're saved, you're a Christian, but you've backslidden, you, you've been out of right relationship with God, God wants to restore you, and we want to pray restoration in your life. You reach out to that number, identify your need, we're going to pray for you name by name and need by need. We give glory to God that we are unleashed to live a new and an abundant life. Let's just go ahead and receive now the benediction, grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Rest rule by now with these your people, both now and forevermore. Amen. Kingdom focused. Praise the Lord for this fantastic season of being unleashed for the glory of God. We would love for you to study along with us. So text STUDY to 313131 and join this process of growing with God. Don't forget to get this word in your spirit. Watch the Rewind on Wednesday nights. And you know what Tuesday night is. It's Bible study. So join us for a powerful word from our pastor on Tuesday night. This is a time for the whole family to grow with God. So check out our Sunday lessons on our website, kingdom.global. And as always, follow us on all of the social media sites, subscribe to our YouTube channel, be blessed, be unleashed, and let's be kingdom focused. Kingdom Focus. Listen, we're so excited to be here on our property doing what it is God called us to do and the reason we bought it to begin with, which is to increase 
our ministry operations capacity. We're serving even before we're able to worship because we know that this is what God would have us to do during this season. I wanna thank everybody who's serving, who's partnering with us, who's coming out and using their muscle uh, to give folks food. I wanna thank you for sowing it to the ministry, all that's necessary in order for us to sustain this project. This is not gonna be for a couple of weeks or a couple months. This is going to be for years. And so I'm asking that you would continue uh, to partner and pray with us. The Bible says not to grow weary in well-doing because we shall reap if we faint not. I'm so grateful to God for Reverend Smith and for her entire team who's been showing up, serving with excellence, providing the capacity and the encouragement that is necessary, the organization, all that's necessary to allow this project to go forward. You can't beat good leadership. Each week we see more and more people coming. Our work is never done. This is a community in need. Our partners have recognized that with us and hence they've come forth and helped us to serve more people. Hopefully in a couple of weeks we hope to be serving not just 500 folks here but 700 people here. Kingdom, focus.